sinners. Yeah. We got along ministers in the pulpit yeah. in this area who will not stand for anything. Yes, they have read the book, mm -hmm. but they won't stand for anything. I have a problem with a go along to get along preacher. Good is not going to put me in heaven. Am I right about it? In our text, my text. See, I really don't have to preach my message, Brother Rochelle. You already preached it for me. <laughs> so I, I just might as well extend the invitation. But my text is 2 Kings 23, verses 1 through 3. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judea and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him and the priests and the prophets and all the people both small and great yeah. and read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant which was found in the house of the Lord right. and the king stood by a pillar yeah. Yeah. and the king stood by a pillar not the pillar he stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and testimonies and his statutes with all their heart with all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book and all the people stood stood to the covenant after you read the book you got to make a stand now John said that there are some who would confess him but they wouldn't stand up for him and if you know the history of Joseph Arimathea yeah. who was a part of the Sanhedrin yeah. when Jesus was, had died and he asked for the body of Jesus yeah. he was a part of that Sanhedrin but at the time apparently when they made a decision to give the people Jesus instead of Barabbas yeah. Joseph Arimathea apparently was not on the scene but maybe here in our text John 12 and 42 yes, Joseph Arimathea he had read the book yes, but when it came time to make a stand he asked for the body of Jesus yes, so he can be placed yeah. in an unused tomb yeah. Yeah. but see Joseph Arimathea wasn't by, wasn't by himself Nicodemus who had come to Jesus by night Nicodemus he brought the myrrh and alloy so that he could anoint the blood of Jesus they read the book when it came time to make a stand they made a stand for Jesus and what a great time to make a stand for Jesus I know that we, we find in Romans 15 and verses 4. Yes, for whatsoever things were written for time yes, were written for our learning yeah. that we through patience and comfort yeah. of the scripture yeah. we might have hope. Yes, if you're going to read the book yeah. then you need to do what the book says. Yeah. We got so many that are gone to the left. But we find out in our text 
that Josiah, he didn't go to the right, nor did he go to the left. He did what he's about to do even being eight years old. He understood what he was supposed to do. Am I right about it? Now when you read the book, many are saying, since I have read the book, there's nothing in a name. I find in Acts 4 and verses 12, there's salvation in no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. I read that where we, if you're going to have someone come to Christ, many are saying, even though they have read the book, there's not a plan of salvation. But I beg the difference. Romans 10 and verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God that you believe with all your heart. Hebrews 11 and 6. You repent of your past sin. Luke 13, 3 and 5. I'll tell you now. Except you repent. Ye shall all likewise perish. Then confess the sweetest name on mortal tongue. Matthew 10, 32 and verses 33. If you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. But if you deny me, I'm going to deny you. Then be buried in the water of grave of baptism for the remission of sin. Acts 2 and verses 38. There are going to be many who are reading the book or saying that Matthew 7 and 21 don't apply to me. But Jesus said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many would say, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we prophesied in thy name? Have we cast out devils in thy name? In thy name have we done many wonderful works. But Jesus said in verses 23, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me ye that worketh iniquity this text Josiah who reigned from 640 BC to 609 BC which was the most important period of the world's history including the great Celtic invasion uh, uh, the fall of of, uh, of Assyria uh, the formation of the Median Empire and the foundation of the Babylonian Empire by Nebuchadnezzar his mother's name was Jedediah which meant darling she was the daughter of Adair of Baska uh, we find here uh, uh, Hilkiah uh, in our text uh, in uh, uh, 2 Kings 22 about verses 4 Hilkiah is mentioned in the genealogy of Ezra Ezra 7 and 1 and this collection that they had uh, was gathered for the repair of the temple this collection must have been uh, progressing for some time but as uh, in the reign of, jo of Joaz after the impieties and the drudgery of Athalia, it was found necessary to collect money uh, for the repair of the temple in 2 uh, Kings 12 verses 4 through 14. Yeah. So now, after the wicked uh, doings of Manasseh and Ammon, a renovation of the sacred building was required and the money needed was being raised by a collection. And as Brother 
Rochelle said when they started giving the money to those who's going to do the work on the repair of the temple they was able to give them that money and didn't ask for any receipts because they found the people to be faithful yeah. thank God if it was like that today yeah. when you have read the book yes, that the, the guys over the treasury uh -huh. could trust you with handling the church money yes, but there are times when those who have read the book yeah. feel like God owed them something uh -huh. so they feel like they can dip and dabble in God's uh -huh. money you got some preachers who feel like yeah. they're supposed to be over God's money supposed to take over God's money supposed to take the properties of the church for themselves because they haven't read the book like they're supposed to read the book I thank God that I am not motivated by money I thank God because if I was motivated by filthy lucre I might as well lay my Bible down because if you're going to read this book called the Bible then you ought to stand for something you got many in the pulpit see I'm going to leave the pew alone I want to go to the pulpit you got many that are in the pulpit have read the same book uh -huh. that I read. Uh -huh. But apparently, it must be lost in the office. Because many who profess to be a child of God, they take advantage of and sister, don't beat me up about what I'm, I'm getting ready to say. They take advantage of the silly women who are laden with sin. Instead of healing, healing with that sister, they take advantage of our sisters. So if you're going to read this book, you need to stand for something. Not get caught up in the sin that so easily beset you. Josiah being a young king he didn't bow down to the evil that had been going on around him when he read the book he tore his clothes in chapter 22 and then he sends someone to the Lord and want to know what the Lord had to say about after he had read this book. Then the Lord let him know that you will always have peace around you when you go to the grave. But all of these devils that is around you, I'm going to have to destroy See, when I read Romans 15 and 4, it's the sense that uh, we are supposed to learn from what was written. You know what happened to the children of Israel when they were disobedient. And now you want to read the book and you want to be disobedient. But a corrupt tree bringing forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is turned down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye should know them. And I'm not saying cast anybody into the fire. But you ought to put some fire up under them to let them know that they're not going by the book. In Acts 20. 28 through 30. He said, if I know this. He said, but I, he said, take heed therefore unto yourselves and all the flock. Oh, the which the Holy Ghost hath made ye overseers. 
said, Feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departed, Paul said, When I leave him, when I leave him, there are going to be some wolves and sheep clothing. Huh? They're going to be speaking perverse things and draw away disciples after them. Not after Jesus, but after them. Then he wrote in 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 and 4. He said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, and that is worshiped. So that he, as God sitteth in the temple of God, showed himself that he is God. Paul told his son in the gospel tent. As I, as I close, he said, I charge thee therefore before God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. He said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reproving, rebuking, exhorting with all long suffering and doctrine. He said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. He's talk, the day he's talking about are the members of the body of Christ. They will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they heap to themselves teachers they have an itch in the ear, and shall be turned away from the truth and shall be turned to faith. Paul said, he said, I fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. Therefore, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the righteous judge shall give me in that day but not unto me only but unto all of those who love the law so in reading that book in reading that book we should understand when Jesus said in Matthew 16 and 18 upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church if you're going to read the book, stand for what you read. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's very open hot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At this time, we're going to take a five-minute break. We got two more speakers after, after, we, after we come back from the break. Huh? Oh, one more speaking in the break. Well, we're going to have Brother Arthur Gray. That's right. Lucy. My big brother. That's right. That's right. Lucy. Of the Fordham Road Church of Christ in Dallas. That's right. Been preaching 36 years. He got three kids, six grandkids. Education from San Fernando High School. At the verse of a song, the next voice you hear will be that of my big brother. <laughs> Eight six in their favorite songs, Don't You Wanna Go to That Land? Yes, don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land where I'm bound? Where I'm bound? Don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land where I'm bound? Where I'm bound? Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Who's it? My big brother. That's right. Who's it? At the Fordham Road Church of Christ in Dallas. That's right. Been preaching 36 years. He got three kids, six grandkids. Education from San Fernando High School. All right. All right. 
at the verse of the song, the next voice you hear will be that of my big brother. <laughs> Eight six in their favorite songs, Don't You Wanna Go to That Land. Yes, sir. <clears throat> what happened? Don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound? Don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land? Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. 